What's up guys, welcome back to The Educated Barfly. Today we're gonna to be doing a little bit of a special episode. So, how do I start this story, Marius? Um, our Instagram feed was just getting clogged up by this drink maker and Marius was kind of interested to figure out whether or not it actually makes bar quality drinks because that's what they advertise. Uh, I wanna just say ahead of time uh, that we are not sponsored by this company at all. We bought this machine with our own money um, and we, uh, we don't have to say nice things about it if we don't want to because they're not paying us anything. We actually paid to do this. Um, it's a very nice looking machine. Uh, basically what this is, is a, um, it is a mashup, all right? It is a partnership between Querig and Dr. Pepper uh, to make a drink machine that can do bar quality cocktails at home. So we decided, why don't we actually test it here on the Educated Barfly and buy one and see if it makes bar quality uh, drinks. So I think that human beings have been obsessed since at least the 1950s for automating things. You know, back in the day, they would like uh, have these storefronts in New York where you could just go in and basically like pull open, like put in your money and pull open a little door and pull a sandwich out, right? Just, just make things more convenient. Um, that said, of late, there have been, since technology has come a long way since the 1950s, there has been a push to try and automate bartending. So uh, there are companies, there's a, actually a bar in Vegas that has a robotic arm that makes cocktails. It's a little bit tedious to watch. It takes a very long time to make a drink. Uh, and I think that when the novelty wears off, that would be something that people just get bored of personally. But um, I was just wondering like what my, what my job uh, security is, you know? I mean, uh, they're automating so many other industries these days. Are they gonna automate bartenders? Now my initial, you know, uh, thought to that would be like, well, no, of course, because bar, because bar, because robots cannot provide hospitality. But as AI gets more and more advanced, maybe they will be able to provide hospitality. And then, you know, basically, we could just have a whole fleet of robot slaves that we don't have to pay anything. And then that actually comes up with like a whole, I don't know, list of other kind of moral questions we're not going to get into right now. Why? Because they well, because get paid? well, if they're intelligent and they can learn. Mm right, then that means that they have some type of consciousness. And if they do that, is it really moral to have them as unpaid slaves in your bar? That's the question. Because you're basically like, what then makes a human being? Like, I don't know, like some people think that we're living in a, in a, in a, uh, whatchamacallit. Some people think we're living in a simulation, which means that we would be no better than robots. And if that's true, then the robots that we create, if they have some type of consciousness and can learn, well, then what? Then there's a whole moral question, right? Or you don't think so? You you look you have a look on your face like you really don't think so, which really calls your morals into question, there, Marius. But what would they need <laughs> money for? Well, huh? I mean, uh, I guess the same thing could be said about human slaves, though, right? Like, like, well, we take care of them and we give them a place to live and then they just do our bidding. So why, why would they need money? I mean, they don't need to buy food. They don't need to but buy- But if they're conscious housing. beings, then, they, then they, they should be allowed some sort of rights, no? I think so. I don't know. This is a moral question that you guys can work out in the comments. Let's get back on track here. All right, so does this thing make bar quality cocktails? Is my uh, job security in danger from the Querig machine? Does it make a good drink? Now, my problem with the term bar quality is that bar quality could mean anything. It could be the crappiest bar on earth and still be bar quality. So is the are these cocktails good? I guess the only way to find out is to set it up. So I'm gonna take you through some steps to setting it up. Obviously, you gotta plug it in. There's a back button back here that you turn it on. Um, you have a little readout here. It tells me to fill the water tank. You want to fill the water tank with chilled water because then it, I mean, the machine chills it, but it will take less time to chill it if you put chilled water in there. And they actually recommend that you chill the pods in the refrigerator. Don't freeze the pods because you'll mess them up, but you can chill them in the refrigerator. And then they also suggest that you put a little ice into the tank itself. Um, so I'm just gonna throw a little crushed ice from my Opal ice maker uh, in there. Robots little pebble. are taking over. What's that? I know the machines are taking over on this channel. Um, well, I gotta say, I really love that Opal machine. It's awesome. The only thing that we have to try and figure out now is there's a lot of people who, when we posted that episode, said that the Opal tends to break in a few weeks, and that it's not like it's just not. It just doesn't have a lot of 
um, longevity. So we're going to test that longevity I mean, by using it. We're a month in at this point and it's still running. I know, so. but I didn't run it for the whole month. But now I'm going to run it. Right. I, I turned it off. I drained it and turned it off and you know did it just while we needed crushed ice, which is maybe that's the way you do it. When you need pebble ice, you do it. All right, here, I'm going to fill this up. There's a little fill line right here. So you just want to not fill it up past the fill line. Well, it actually takes a good amount of water. That's, that's like the whole carafe of water there. Uh, then we're going to put our top on. And we're going to plug this in right here. Cool. That seems like it's on. Is it on? Insert pod to make a drink. Bam, let's do it. All right, what are we making first? And we're going to do all of them. Maris is like, well, we already tested it. We know how they taste. You don't have to do them all. But I think that if I didn't do them all and I had these sitting out here, Half of you people would be like, in the comments, you gotta be like, why didn't you taste them all? I wanna know how they all taste. So we're gonna start with the Cosmo. FYI, I did test this before. I know how they taste. I know what my opinion is. And now I'm gonna share my opinion with you. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so just, ah, there's a little divot in here and you have to match it up with the little divot in there. Just, F, there's like a little bump in there and the divot goes in the bump, all right? So you just place it in there. Drop this. I chilled my glass ahead of time, although I've been talking so long it kind of unchilled itself. And then uh, we are going to press the start buttons right here, okay? So when you press the start button, it says preparing drink. And then it's gonna remind me, right, to put the glass there. So this can take a little while. Um, if you, oh, it didn't even remind me about the glass this time. Oh, inconsistent. And look at the force of it spilled cocktail everywhere into my coupe. Uh, there we go. Okay, that's a pretty nice wash line. Um, I sh I wish I had gotten a peeler and an orange to do like a fresh orange spritz in here to see wow. if it would. Uh, let's try it out. Are we ready? You guys are gonna watch me actually get a little tipsy here on the educated barfly, which is something you guys have all been asking for. All right, let's try it out. I mean, I got to tell you right now, this looks like high C and it and it smells like high C. All right, it doesn't smell fresh. Oh crap, that is a lot of booze. That is not balanced at all. That is a ton of booze. That is like, you can, it's like, that's like a double. It's like a double vodka. And it does taste like high C. I, I'm not a fan. Um, this is nothing like what a Cosmo would taste like. And yet, it's strangely pleasant. I mean, it's like, <laughs> the. The guy that likes trashy drinks inside of me, <laughs> this is not good, but <laughs> like I kind of like it. If that's, if that's, it's like this. I mean, here's the thing. Um, I am not gonna make myself a Cosmo at the end of the day. If, if I am at the end of my day, I'm not gonna make a Cosmo, but if I have a chilled Cosmo in my fridge, I might actually drink it because it's booze and I need booze. I've got two kids. I need booze at the end of the day. All right, way too boozy, not balanced. But it tastes is, like high C. It even says on the on the box, it says boozy, like or. It does. Oh yeah, they do. They have like a little guide on it. It says well, it says fruity and tart on yeah. the guy, and then uh, on uh, the box it has like a little guide. It says booziness four out of five, and sweetness three out of five. So uh, they are letting you know that this is really boozy. But the thing is, is that. The problem with it is that it's not balanced with the other flavors. So you can have stuff that's boozy. An old fashioned is boozy, but it's also balanced. And that is not balanced. I would like to know who is making the pods. Who is the consultant that is uh, consulting on these flavors? Cause I gotta tell you, any of you guys work for Querig, any of you guys work for Dr. Pepper or for this company, Drinkworks, either their parent company or the company itself, I'd like a crack at balancing out some flavors and pods. Do some uh, bar fly pods. All right, the mojito. This one is definitely not gonna stand up to the mojito that I can make and the one that I made on this channel at all. It's not going to. I'm just telling you right now. Do we, do you have some mint? Did you bring mint? No, there's mint already in there. I know. There's mint flavor. No, no, I wanna taste the, I don't wanna manipulate the cocktail. They, That's why I didn't do an orange for this. But they suggest, they do suggest. Uh, but I, I wanna do, I, well, first of all, A, I don't have mint. B, I didn't buy mint. And C, I wanted to taste it all on my own. I wanted to taste them all on their own. 
I wanted to taste how they would actually taste right out of the machine without manipulation because you can manipulate anything and make right, it taste but, better. But they say you should garnish it and then they suggest how you Well, you're yeah, yeah, to but I'm not it. presenting this cocktail. And yes, you would get a little bit of mint. We don't have mint. And my mint plant is dead. All the rains killed it. Oh, place a median glass. And then, oh, it, it did the reminder this time, but it didn't do the reminder the first time. All right, here we go. Pressed. Nope, didn't press it hard enough. I placed the glass there, dude. There we go. Three times the charm, I guess. Well, when you're making two cocktails that in quick succession, it's probably not gonna, it's gonna give you some time to make sure that you have everything in order. Because <laughs> the machine thinks you're drunk? Yeah. Is that what you're trying to say? Oh, that's okay. It's a little weird. So this one actually has soda. So what I didn't show you guys before is that there is a little, there's a little cartridge of CO2 in the back here that's hidden by this little panel. And this is what gives you all of your, uh, that's what gives you uh, the fizziness for your drink. I mean. Oh, whoa. whoa, right up to the top. That was a lot of ice though. That was a lot of ice. I'm glad I brought my straw. Right. My Surfside Zip straw. Ooh, there we go. All right, here we go. It tastes like Zima, and it, de and it it definitely has mint in it. All right, I won't go so full in the ice next time. You know what? It's like a it's like a limey, minty uh, rum and soda is what it tastes like. It does not taste like a mojito, but you know what? I gotta tell you. I'm not hating it. <laughs> yeah, I, I try this one. It tastes like it's like a minty lemonade. Yeah, and it's like, definitely or like a limeade. Yeah, it's, it's, it's sharper like a, than lemonade. It's like a limeade. Yeah, it's fine. It's like a minty limeade. The booze is more balanced in this one. Okay, so you're gonna get more of a balanced booze uh, in this one. Or I'll put these like this. Although I gotta steal my straw back. What for the margarita? Yeah, I'm gonna put it in a tall glass just because I didn't have an old-fashioned glass handy and. I didn't want to go back out to the garage and get an old fashioned glass, so. All right, here we go. Margarita time. All right, be careful with the ice. Oh, stop it. I didn't spill that much. Just a little. All right, here we go. So these are the pods, bam. I don't know why it's important to have the pods like that. Okay. All right. Let's go. That one's like, he didn't need a third reminder this time. He knows what he's doing. There must be a glass there. Although I guess if you get really drunk, you guess you could be like, ah, oh, I'm gonna make it and just like do this. And then there's no glass there. You just pour it all away. The there we go. Not enough ice. Well, this is pouring the amount for a short glass because uh, it is definitely meant for like a short tumbler. Let's taste. Oh, that was horrible. It's like a Margaritaville margarita. I mean, here's the thing. When you buy this machine, you're not gonna be thinking that this is gonna make fresh um, cocktails. And it does make, I guess, bar quality cocktails if you're going to a sports bar. I guess it would be kind of bar quality, I guess. This is very agave forward and pretty sweet. It's got a good deal of tequila. I'm not sure what, the, what quality tequila they're using. I would really like to know what spirits they use. Like what company is providing the spirits or are they just buying like whatever, you know, kind of pre-made, like pre-distilled spirit from whatever company and then just putting in there or if there's actually like, because I don't see it branded in here. You would think that if a company like Sobieski or, you know, uh, I don't know, like, you know, Distillador or something, or Havana Club were like providing that they would brand it on the, the, let me see if it says here. No, I looked, it doesn't say the brand. It doesn't say like who is distilling the liquor. It doesn't even say the, the ratios or anything. and certified colors. You know what's funny is that the guide says the sweetness is only two. 
Well, this is super, super sweet. You can tell that there's a lot of like triple sec or Grand Marnier or something. Although I doubt it's Grand Marnier because I think they're cost. They're, they're, uh, co they're the, the cogs on this would be like too high. Cogs? Cost of goods sold. Well, it's bar, it's bar talk for cost of goods sold. Mm. I am feeling a little tipsy now. All right, guys. Uh, I don't know what more to say about this. Did I, did I get everything? The setup part? Like, what else do I need to uh, say, Marius? Is there anything that I... Yeah, so... Oh! When, yeah, yeah. What? What were you going to say? I was going to say, when I bought the machine, I bought it from Best Buy, and it came, and I thought it was going to come with samples, but it didn't come with any samples, which makes sense because Best Buy doesn't sell alcohol, right? Well, so. I would think that the reason why it doesn't come okay. with samples is because it's not legal to send booze through the mail to every state. So if they want to be able to sell this machine in every state, then they would not have booze with it, I would think. And Best Buy doesn't have a liquor license, so they couldn't sell the machine. Well, they can sell the machine because you don't actually no. need a liquor license. No. There's no age restriction on no, this no, machine. No, 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 no. It doesn't come with a sample, and it doesn't come with a sample because if it came with a sample, they couldn't sell it on the At store. Best Buy, right. Yeah. Oh, true, so, totally true. So I had to order the pods in the mail because you can't buy them in the store right. in LA. Right. Well, you can buy them in Orange County. Yeah, but I wouldn't drive like an hour and a half. Okay, hour. so here's the deal, guys. Um, first of all, this machine has no age restriction on it. You can actually be any age and buy it. You can be 18 and buy it. Although there is age restriction on the pods. The pods are only going to be sold through the mail to states that actually sell, that actually allow booze to come through the mail. So you're going to have to figure out what your state laws are if you're going to get it through the mail. That said... There are a bunch of places where you can buy it retail, but they're kind of few and far between. So in California, you can't buy it in LA, but you can buy it in Orange County. I think it, I read it's something like 50 cities in Florida. Um, there's a bunch. Uh, you'd have to go on the website to kind of figure it out because there's like too much for me but, to memorize. But they came in the mail. It was like two days. And the positive. So it came survived. fast. Yeah. It came pretty fast. Yeah. But, um, and ordering stuff through the mail is not really that. I mean, it's like most people do that with Amazon now anyway. Yeah, it's fine. So. And, and there are some pods I tried to buy the Moscow Mule and you couldn't do it. Right. That's the other thing that I actually forgot to mention. I'm glad you brought it up is that all, not all pods are sold in all markets. So for instance, we can't get the Moscow Mule and for some reason we can't get the White Russian. Yeah. And I would think that the Big Lebowski takes place in Los Angeles and that is the movie that sort of made, that sort of brought back the iconic status of the White Russian and sort of revitalized it in the minds of everybody. You would think that in Los Angeles you could get the White Russian, but you can't. Maybe it's like a dairy thing. You can't export dairy across state borders. I mean, I would, I, I, honestly, I am dying to get my hands on a White Russian pod for this thing because I really want to know how that goes because I could not imagine that would be any good. I'm sorry, but it, that's just crazy. Am I just, am I alone in thinking, you, you, like, you're looking at me as if I'm alone in thinking no, that that's completely like, insane. Because you'd have to be powdered milk, right? Yeah, or something. Or I mean, like, it, yeah, I mean, they, or, not only, or, or, or they just have like, or they just like put a, like a crap ton of like tartaric acid or something that's gonna preserve it. Um, but I just couldn't imagine how that would be any, any good. All right, well, there you have it. Now, the other thing that I, I gotta announce here is, um, I guess we, we didn't really work this out ahead of time, so I'm just gonna say it, but we don't have absolutely no use for this machine anymore. We did our review. I think it was a pretty fair and balanced review. Hopefully you guys got something out of the, you know, ramblings here. I'm actually a little tipsy now, so I just feel like rambling even more. Um, hopefully you guys got something out of it, but I, I think we're gonna give this thing away. So. We have been thinking about, Marius and I, what we were gonna do for our 100,000 subscriber uh, kind of like special thing. I think what we're gonna do is give this machine away. Uh, so what are the parameters, Marius? Let's work this out, even though we're working out on camera. And then whoever uh, watches this far is gonna know what to do. So what do we do? We're gonna do like an Instagram yeah. post. Okay, so this is what we'll do. We'll post a picture of me doing something with this machine or the machine itself. Once you see a picture of this machine on our Instagram, which is at the Educated Barfly, comment below and tag two friends that you think would be interested in this. And we will randomly select after how many days? You wanna run it for what, a week? A week after we hit 100K? Yeah. All right, so uh, right after we hit 100,000, uh, we will run it for a week. We will randomly select somebody and we will send them this machine. We will not be able to send the pods to them. 
No. You guys are on your roads for the pods, but we will send somebody this machine. We will pack it back up and you will have it. I will clean it. I will try and make it look as new as possible. It's only been used thrice at this point. Well, four times, I think. Like last night, here's, I mean, here's the, here's the honest to God truth, all right? No matter what I say in this video about the quality of these cocktails, last night, after I put the kids to bed, I was like, I want to drink. But all my booze was tucked away. I didn't feel like making a cocktail. So I plugged this thing in. I waited the 11 minutes for it to chill because I was using uh, non-chilled water just out of like my you know, like little water dispenser. And I was watching a movie. I wanted to have a drink. I drank a margarita. I will say that the only reason why I drank the margarita though was because I was like, eh, we're sort of low on the mojito pods and we're low on the Cosmo pods. I knew we were shooting this the next day. I didn't know what exactly to expect from our shoot. So I decided that I would do the margarita because we had opened it yesterday. We only tested it one time. And I gotta say, I drank the whole thing and it was pretty, you know, good. So I think, you know, this thing is not going, this is not going to threaten the educated bar. Here's the deal. This is not gonna make a drink as good as you can make on your own. This is not gonna threaten our channel by just like making the greatest quality drinks. And it's like, well, who needs to be making our own cocktails anymore? because it doesn't make that great a drink. But what I will say is this, it's convenient. And I would use this if it was just sitting there and I just had a few pods just like in my fridge, just chilling, I would use this. I did it last night. And honestly, I didn't judge it while I was drinking it at all. I, think I was like, this is all right. Like this is pretty, oh, it's, it, it, it's like the, uh, the Keurig coffee machine. It's like, it's not the pods. It's not the greatest coffee. They're not the greatest. It's not gonna, it's not pour over. Quick and easy. Right, you're not, it's not a coffee snob coffee, but yeah. it will get the job done. If you don't wanna whip out your espresso machine and do and the I whole And I gotta thing, tell you, yeah. you know, this kind of, this also kind of solves a problem for me as well. You know what that problem is? Is that every single time there's a party anywhere near me, it's always like, oh, Leandro's a bartender. He can work out the drinks. Oh, and then I end up getting, roped into like designing a menu, like making drinks and then making drinks for everybody instead of enjoying the party. So if you guys are doing like poker night with the boys or if you're like hanging out with the ladies at the house or whatever, and you guys wanna have a drink and you don't wanna be roped into being the bartender that makes all the drinks and you just don't want that for that night, this is gonna come in handy because nobody's gonna judge this. Everybody knows the quality of what's coming out of here. You look at this machine and you say, this is a machine that makes bar quality cocktails you know what the quality is going in. So you're not gonna be let down by it. That's what I would say. Yeah. Is that fair? Is that's a pretty fair assessment. So, yeah. That's not like overly judgy, right? No, and you know, do the garnish and everything and it's gonna Yes, I didn't do the garnishes at all, which is much to the chagrin of this guy who's looking at me with like a, you have this cocktail channel and you don't even well, garnish them. When I tried it at home, I even put a mint spray in it. Look at that. Yeah. I wanna see that mint spray, by the way. I wish you had taken a picture. I could see your Didn't garnish game. I'd love, love to see what Marius's garnish game is. That's, that's all I wanna know. It's like how you garnish stuff. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't think there's just really that much more to say. So remember when we, we are at 95,500, right? Right now. Yeah. Right now. Not so it's out, but yeah. Well, whatever. Well, as of the, this taping, but I'm hoping we'll get this out quick. Taping. We are just, well, here's the thing, Marius, we did, we said we we're going to do a hundred K thing. We got to get this, this video out before we hit hundred K. Yeah. We can't just sit on this video. It needs to go out. Fast. Anyway, we are just shy of 100,000, which is what I was trying to say. Once we hit 100,000, we're going to give away this machine to one lucky individual. And the way that we're going to do that is you go to our Instagram at the Educated Barfly, you comment on the photo, you know, and it wouldn't help if you, you know, it, I mean, it wouldn't help. I'm a little tipsy. Uh, it would help. It'd be helpful if you subscribed or you, you know, followed us on Insta. We've got some pretty good Insta content, I think. Um, anyway, uh, just go, comment, tag two friends that you think would like it, and uh, then you will be entered to win automatically. Um, and the people you tag will not be entered to win. They have to do their own thing. But tag them to see if they'd like it. If they wanna enter, then they can do their own entry. And then after one week, we will choose a winner who will get this machine. Pods not included. All right, sound fair? Sound good? All right, guys, if you like this channel, please hit like and subscribe and check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash educatedbarfly. We have awesome exclusive content there and we're doing really well with it. So just check us out there. We got some good stuff coming out pretty soon. Uh, we've got a back catalog of awesome stuff as well. And we've got a lot of exclusive videos that'll never come to YouTube. Uh, check out all of our sponsors. 
Uh, first and foremost, check out Staggerly Goods, which makes me look so strapping in these aprons. And right now, through the first, go to Staggerly Goods and type in uh, SLG Save 30 for 30% out off at checkout. Uh, and then check out Barfly Mixology Gear, which does all of our wonderful bar gear. I don't have any bar gear in this video right now, but uh, check them out on the intrawebs. Uh, we also have uh, uh, affiliate links for our Amazon store below every single video, so you can find out what gear we're using in what video. And then on top of that, on top of all that, check out Surfside Sips, which makes these high impact glass straws that I actually did use in this video. Uh, I love Surfside Sips. Every single person that has ordered Surfside Sips from being exposed to it through this channel has written me an email being like, I love the straws, they're awesome. So we have a discount code for 20% off at checkout, which is barfly at checkout. All right guys, I'll see you on another time.